So next on to poorly performing managing agents. Obviously, there's a few managing agents here today that we never have that as an issue, do we? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I know just from my own experiences of um, being on South Ferry Quay since 99 that we had the managing agent that was appointed by the developer. Um, and after a while, everyone was very unhappy with them. So we kicked them off, took control, and then we had another managing agent. We were learning the ropes a bit, and they stayed for a few years, and then we've got another managing agent. And that's something we're a bit more sort of demanding, I suppose, and we've got our service level agreements in place and various other issues. So um, it's just something that you need to be active and as directors and challenge your managing agents uh, in the same way that David said, really, with regards to what is expected of that particular managing agent. So I would suggest that you always have open discussions with your managing agents about what's expected at the start probably document what is um, expected of that managing agent. If you're not happy with, some, with the way that they're performing, then talk to them about it. They won't know unless you tell them what the issues are. So always have that open conversation with them. Um, there's a RICS code of practice, and I think I saw that Jerry actually, everyone's got a copy of it. <laughs> um, so, and that's something that is a code of good practice, both for you as leaseholders or directors, and also looking at how a landlord is supposed to um, respond, and also good practice for managing agents. And um, what happens in a tribunal situation is that I think I discussed before that the tribunal will say, "Where's the lease? Show me the terms that are applicable." If in fact there's no terms that deal specifically with a certain point about good practice, then the next thing that the tribunal will look at is the code to see whether you've actually complied with the terms of the code. So it is, it's not a long read, but it's a very useful read. Um, and if you are involved in, as a director, then you certainly need to have a read of that um, document um, because it, it's time really well spent. Uh, Ryan first, and then we'll go. If the management agent isn't registered with one of the professional bodies of management agents, are they um, required to comply with the RICS code? I don't know, do you? Do you know that answer? Um, yes, it's, it's, it's um, backed by the um, Secretary of State, so this is the code to follow for anybody practising, um, and fall foul of it at your peril, really, uh, for any managing agent. Uh, so you don't have to be a, a RICS regulated company or an ARMA member um, necessary to, to practise, but you still have to follow uh, good practice and suggest that all agents do follow it. I, I would also suggest that you should <coughs> probably actively consider using a managing agent that is registered with... Well, we, don't, we don't apply the managing agent, right. but that is something that is massive for us. We want them to register it all again. Well, we want them out, really. <laughs> 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 and we're going to get them out, so that's it. Um, but so everything they're doing against what we're trying to work with them on, they're just being awkward. So, so are, you, are you actively considering then um, making an application to appoint a new manager? Yeah. Yeah, it's a long road. Yes, we, well, you, you need to give them the, a, a notice initially to say what they've done wrong and yeah. give them yeah. the right to put it right so in a reasonable time. The contract. I guess we can have visibility of that as the leaseholders. I'm not sure yeah. if, in fact, you, um, if, if the managing agent isn't party to the lease that you've entered, then um, you may not actually have the right to demand the contract between the managing agent and the landlord. Mm -hmm. It depends on what the terms of your lease say and if they're party to that lease. So you'd need to check on that. Certainly I've had an issue um, for another client with leaseholders where they weren't happy with the, um, the managing agent and in fact all it took was a conversation with the receivers for the landlord because the landlord had gone bust um, to tell them their concerns with that particular agent and the, the receivers for the landlord actually voluntarily changed the agent. The owner of the landlord company is the owner of the management. Right, so that's not going to happen they're the then. Ones who, no, they're the ones who've just taken over. The ones who've just taken over. Right. So the, pre the previous owner of the management company has now bought out the majority interest in the freehold from the previous uh, freehold. Right. The developers. Well, so it now it's all run in massive Two separate companies, but it's the same group. It's the same owner. Well, it sounds like you are going to have to go down the formal route of um, applying to appoint a manager, but as I said, you need to give specific things that they're doing wrong and a reasonable time for them to put it right. Without <coughs> wanting to go into what we'll be having in the next session, which is structures for good management, I think there is a difference, as we're saying, between appointing a managing agent and going down the right to manage route. Yeah. Um, this is where you take complete control of your own 
building and the right to appoint your own managing agent yeah, in the future. Are you going for that, not appointing yeah, a new manager? And this is appointing a managing agent is different. Another route, which you may have to consider at some point, uh, where you can't achieve this, but you can still go to the first tier tribunal property, property chamber. Yeah. Well no, done. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> um, and they will appoint a managing agent, but you may not have a say in who gets appointed. Mm. That's the problem with that route. But they, they, they can insist. But that's much more difficult to do in the sense that um, you do have to say why you want to get rid you have to give evidence. Mm -hmm. And what you think is dreadful and unacceptable may not at all be dreadful or unacceptable in the tribunal. Yes, you have to prove fault to that fault notice. Not just that you don't like them. I oh, know, but less people. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another thing is... Sorry, Alan, you wanted to come... No, Jerry, I was the same question. Same question, yeah. OK, thanks. Um, another thing, if in fact you are appointing the managing agent, and because you are a director of the management company, which is party to the lease, um, which happens on a number of schemes, including the one where I'm a director, is that you need to ensure that there is actually a written contract between you and the managing agent. If you don't have a written contract, it just means the terms are not clear. You could fall out as to what the managing agent is supposed to do. Um, I think if they're a decent um, reputable management agent, they have that offered. Yes. I think this is, again, this is something which we will be discussing in the third session because the contract is absolutely critical. And I don't want to go into that right now, but it's for us, that's a lesson we've learned as engaged from everyone's experiences, good and bad. The contract is actually the most important thing. It almost more important than least yeah. in terms of getting what you want in terms of service provision and your agenda. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, at City we went on a, a long and arduous journey from um, dealing with these issues. So I think it would be a good case study to, to yeah. use an example in that third session from being leaseholders, dealing with it on the performance managing agents, um, builder and landlord that didn't there uh, to the point where we are now where we, we self manage. And we do have a, a very good uh, managing agent that works hand in hand with us, so don't despair. And I think the third session will, will help with that. So the things that will be covered in the third session, and I won't go into in too much detail, is obviously looking at mechanisms for non-performance in the contract and also are you able to terminate on what terms, how long do you have to... You know, I've seen some where you have to give a year's notice, which obviously you wouldn't want to agree to. Um, have you got any other comments on I'd these just, issues, from David? From a practical point of view, just you know, a lot of firms have teams of state managers and secretaries, and um, often it's a very emotive subject managing a property. Um, you're managing somebody's home, and if the relationship isn't working with the company, often it can be just about the individuals involved that serve your block, and the rest of the company may be performing quite well. Mm -hmm. So I'd just say before going down the route of um, necessarily of looking to appoint an alternative manager through a tribunal system or going right to manage, simply uh, speak to the, the uh, one of the directors at that firm and just say, can we try a different member of staff with a, that's not bogged down by any of the historical issues that you may have and see if that works. It may, you may be surprised. You know, um, some, sometimes it's just how a member of staff works with a particular RMC director or resident, resident chair. They're not compatible. Without going into too much detail, there's corruption. Right, right OK. <laughs> <laughs> and we want, we want a professional body who's got a good reputation and who's going to cause us less of a headache because yeah. we're doing all the management. So we've got issues, they're not even dealing with them. Right. So, you know, it's all standard stuff, they're not delivering. Yeah, we don't really have faith in the, in the ownership yeah. behind these companies. It's the sort right. of guy who's going to direct the yeah. 60 companies and 40 of them have gone to us. It's just a lot of money. Yeah, it's yeah. okay.